Good day, everybody. We are here, Astro Monday. Supposed to be with Gary, <laughs> but it's me, Rob Earth again, filling in for Gary and the team because they are on a plane. I think they've already landed in Costa Rica, actually. They're in San Jose. I think they're at the airport. They've got another flight to take over to their final destination in Costa Rica. But we are going to be hearing from Christopher Witecki for Astro Mondays. Let me know where you're viewing from. And here we go. For the first time. Yes, it is going to be good, everybody. India. 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 Hey, brother. How's it going, man? Amazing. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Nice to make your acquaintance. Yeah, good to meet you. Gary is always talking about you, and, and he's, he's holding you up so high. I'm super excited to chat with you here. Pleasure. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Of course, I'm just filling in. There's a lot going on in my life. Um, maybe you can uh, shed some light. Yeah, exactly. Be happy to. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot going on for everyone. It seems, huh? Yeah. This is a real. Um, so this is a real moment in human history. Really, astral. The astrology tells us like the clockwork of the universe. So you can look at all the planets almost as different hands on the clock. They all move at the different, you know, and it's always telling us what time is it for humanity. And right now, what time it is, is that we are stepping away from the, the karma we were born to. So everyone was born with issues with themselves, personal issues with themselves that they then manifest in their life with as issues with other people. And so we have since sort of March kind of got become aware, you know, finally of certain things that have sort of held us back. And now that we're in Scorpio right now, which is where we are, this is the, the part of consciousness that can draw some lines. Do you talk about it all year long? I want to do this. I want to do that. But you get to Scorpio and it's the time where it's like, okay, I finally have the courage or the strength or the motivation to, to draw the line. And sometimes it could just be like, oh, shift, the whole year's gone by. I haven't done anything. So there's also that psychology too. We see the New Year's, we see the holidays. Um, but this is a moment, and we just had a new moon um, really today, this morning, early this morning. So <clears throat> this new moon is actually technically the first seed of the future you want to create, the new future you want to create that is that is going to be free of your issues with yourself. That's that's the big picture of it right there. So lots, lots of shedding. Is, is Lots of shedding, yeah. Yeah. And people are, you know, in my following, people are getting in accidents, they're getting sick. There's a lot of, you know, ex excuses, you know, physical excuses to face that stuff. That's ex exactly what I just went through. I, you know, the thing that everybody's been talking about the last few years, that that virus, uh, apparently I'm I'm on day eight of that right now. And wow. for me, it's been, uh, yeah, just laying in bed and thinking about myself. <laughs> And, and what's going on in life. And from what I know from a lot of other people that I was talking about before I went down, they were dealing with the same thing and the world as a whole as well. But it's interesting yeah. that you say that because personally, it's very, very resonant because it was like the sickness, like you said, it was a physical reason for this other energetic shift that's happening. Yeah. It's exactly how it felt. Yeah, I think I think all you know, I actually I got a cold, a real cold, not not the virus, but I got a cold virus for the first time in like seven years at the beginning of this transit. I had a cold and then I had food poisoning and then I broke my foot. So God pretty much body slammed me down. It's just like you're gonna pay attention, you know, because it very but I know a lot of people getting I think I think in a virus allows you I mean Gary always says a virus is really getting well, not getting sick. Like your, your body, you know, you're forced to release energy in your body that's tied to your karma, that you're, you have embodied those issues. So are you sitting in bed reflecting on your whole life? <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what's happening. Wow. And it's for me, right? Like it's, it's, uh, I, it was, it was just like a, 
an awakening moment. And before that, I was just grinding away, working, 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 working. So okay. this was a pattern interrupt that was apparently needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And have you come to realizations about yourself, like like turning point realizations? So, you I mean, there's realiz <laughs> yeah. so, so, so there's realizations on like, I guess the big thing for me and my and my wife is like, what are we doing with our living situation? Are we going to stay in California? What are we prioritizing? Because the reason why we're in Los Angeles is because the work thing is the priori priority and the networking thing is the priority. And that's good. It's an important part of our life and our life story. But is it what is in front? And so just really determining the focus, is the focus on work or is the focus on family and that is really what has been brought to the surface for me and personally it's it's more about like what do i feel is important um and i guess the at the at the basic of everything i i just wanted to be at a place where i'm happy with with my wife and my future family that we built together and that's that was most important and before that what was important is like finishing editing my social media content you know like that was like somehow ahead of this other stuff um on a day-to-day -day, you know consciousness level like somehow editing a social media post somehow crept above my my priorities like above all else and so um it was it's a it's a good reminder you know to to like realize the things that are actually important here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, you're you're exactly where all Libras are. You're a Libra, right? Yeah. Gary sent me your sent me your chart. Hope you don't know. Hope you don't mind. You're Good. a little naked. No, that's naked amazing. Um, yeah, he, he sent me your chart. So all Libras are so Libras all as a as a species, if you will. They they live their karma in their lifestyle, like in their lifestyle. So. Libras live, like where they work, their patterns, that's where all their karma plays out. Their environment is where their karma plays out. So they put themselves in an environment that teaches them, that crafts them. You're a very industrious uh, Libra and you have past life issues with actually failing at business. So you had you lost a business in a past life. You lost probably an empire, something pretty big. So your karma has been to be successful. Like you, that was your karmic issue with yourself is that I'm not going to screw up this time. That's why your career took precedent over your quality of life because you wanted to prove to yourself you weren't going to mess it up. And what you've realized, it sounds like is, oh, I, I'm not going to mess it up. Like maybe there's some other things I should aim for. So, you know, Libras, all Libras are actually looking probably for a change of lifestyle, complete change of lifestyle, which is a change of, you know, work-life balance. It's a change of health issues, maybe cutting certain substances out of your diet. It could also be that you literally relocate to a new, new quality of life location. Um, and that actually just that sort of moved forward officially on Saturday, November 4th. That's when the gears said, okay, it's time to go forward and make a change of life for Libras. Okay. So that's was Saturday was November fourth a Saturday, uh, yeah. Um, it was a Saturday, I believe. It was it, this last Saturday was not the four. Let's see, where are we at now? We're um, no, we're last Saturday was the eighth. So it was a week ago, last Saturday, that the karma wheels started going forward. Mm -hmm. It was all since March. It's been like coming to realizations about your life, coming to realizations about how you live, etc. And now Saturn Direct is like, okay, let's do something about it. So it certainly got – the conversation became more serious, I would say. Amazing. And it is time. And for you, because you have a Virgo rising, it, it literally is going to be a change of life for you also. You're, you have a Virgo rising, but you're Libra. So, you're, so you end up living kind of – you do transits twice in a row. First your rising does it, and then your sun sign does it, which basically means that you sort of change from the outside in. That's how you are. You change from the outside in, which is opposite of what most people change from the inside out. So, which means the walls close in on you, and then you're like, "Okay, I need to make a change." Yeah, yeah. Like I mm -hmm. said, the uh, environment changes, and then the reflections happen based on that. Yes, exactly. And so, it's and, 
And so what does that mean for like everybody else? So is so most people change from the inside out. Is there is there a season that's happening right now? And and I guess like what does that mean for everybody else? Well, I mean, everyone is actually ready for a change. So and that's what I kind of opened the show with. It's like we've all come to a certain point of wisdom. You could put it that way. We've finally gotten some wisdom. It's ver we put the facts together. We see the patterns now. They're undeniable. We're, light bulbs are going off. And now people are saying, okay, I want to, I want to make a change. I want to change my life. And, and there's a lot of things that are changing in the big picture as well. There's, as a result, there's going to be a big power shift in the world because everyone's getting up and moving at the same time. You're not the only person. You know, some people are literally relocating like, you, like you're thinking about. But some people are changing jobs. Some people are starting businesses. Some people are retiring from businesses. You're going to see between now and January a huge migration of people out of relationships, out of jobs, you know, almost like you – kind of in the likes you know like you i see when you were born and you're born in the 80s so you felt the 80s were a certain like growing up were a certain feel and vibe and the 90s were a different vibe than the 80s and that's kind of where we're at we're about to go to a the whole world's about to go to a whole new vibe like mm. you see between the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s you know it, it just happens to be happening at 2023 not at the 2020 mark um but in 2024 we the, the world's a whole new vibe I mean, I see that many different ways, even just with how the internet's working and the the shifting landscapes of social media, and even in the physical world, everything seems to be very fragile, maybe even breaking apart. And yeah. like you're saying, if everything's shifting, then everything's sort of uh, in flux, right? Yep. Is there is there any control that people can take within this, or are we just all along for the ride? Uh, you, we're the ones making it happen. I mean, at the end of the day, you, be, you know, you moving is going to have consequences. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to change all of your followers. Fo your vibe is going to change in your social media. Your vibe is going to change with your wife, you know. So it's it's a ripple effect. We, we are actually making the change. And that's actually, if you want to talk about, like, power and corruption, the whole reason why media is trying to manipulate people and manipulate the story is because we are in charge. Yeah. They, they, if if they could just get away with it, they do it. <laughs> you know, like they've yeah. got to convince us. And the reason why they have to convince us is because we actually are the ones who are driving the car. They just, you know, the powers that be, whether it's, you know, the World Bank or whatever you want to look at, the powers that be don't want you to know that you actually are the one in charge. Yeah. It's like they're steering the ship by steering our consciousness. Yes. And, and that's what the programming is and and they need our consent for everything and yep. we are voluntarily allowing them to utilize our power of control and yes yeah, yeah. I, I mean if a hundred people are in the room with the king they think the king is in power because he's got the robe and the and the jewelry but the <laughs> But the fact that the hundred people are viewing the king as the powerful one is just allowing the king to then gather that power and then redirect it basically against them. Yes. And for his own will. Well said. So, I mean, so here's, we're at a moment where people are waking up to the fact that that's true. If those hundred people suddenly left the, the court, the king right. would feel powerless at that point. If they're like, I don't hear, care what he has to say. The king would be powerless. I, I think what we have been told is that we need them, whatever them is, yeah. right? And and that's where the power string is. And the truth is, is we we don't. You know, um, we we evolved on on the planet for centuries without them. You know, like we ate without them. We faced our fa health issues without them. You know, we fed ourselves without them. You know, we clothed ourselves without them. So we've we've let ourselves be convinced that we need them. But what I'm, you know, telling my followers is just you, it's time to listen to your heart. So if you want to save the world, go live in your passion and in your joy. You know, go find your joy. Go find, you know, find what lights you up. Do it authentically. So with you and your wife, like, well, where would you enjoy living? What would you wake up and smile every day? You know, what environment would make you smile? You know, because I think once people are in joy, 
that's an unstoppable force. You can't really stop like kids from laughing in church. You know, you can't, when people are enjoying themselves, like there's a momentum there that's very hard to snuff out. Right. That's yes. authenticity. That's satisfaction. <clears throat> yes. That's Absolutely. power. <clears throat> that's real power. And you can say that's the power of God. If you want to be spiritual, yeah. I think that is the power of God. Right. Can I hear you? We mentioned God, and then he goes on mute. Okay. All right. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I thought it was because you mentioned no, the word my God. My phone rang, and I was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. God was showing me something there. Actually, it was Bank of America calling. <laughs> so they think they're a God, right. but they're not. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah. So yeah, even God, I think living in your heart is living in your power, living in your authenticity. You know, and choosing to, and choosing not to give your time and attention away to you know, parasites, basically. Yeah, that which is not joy, essentially. 100%. Yeah, that which is not joy, that is, that was, you know, I don't even think we have to get in any kind of conversation about morals or karma or spirituality. It, it, like, if you live in your heart authentically, you will always do right by yourself. You will always do right by others. You will always do what's best for the world. It's, it's simple. We don't have to talk about religion or Jesus or Muhammad or anything. We can just... Live in your heart and the deal is done. Yeah, right. I mean, that's what praying is, right? Is you're bringing your awareness to your heart center as opposed to everything up here, which is what we're programmed to think. Yeah, um, literally. Yeah, I mean, we're just grasping on to our heart. Yeah. Do you have yeah, anything for the, the uh, I mean, that was all really good for everybody. Um, I was going to ask, about everybody else but that's that's good, good to be aware of and it's and it's good a constant reminder that we're in control and that every moment is a choice and to choose joy to choose harmony authenticity um and, and i think that's like the instructions like that's the instruction manual for for what it is to be human here it really is it's the simplest equation that there is um i think so where we are right now in Scorpio, we just had a new moon today. So today is technically the day that the new day. Today is the new day, according to the planets. Like brand new day, new life, draw a line in the sand. And you say, that was yesterday. This is, this is what I want tomorrow. And that's what the line drawing is. And it's good to, create, to draw a line and say, this is my line. It may take me six months to catch up or for me to see the results. That's fine. But my line is right here. I want to create this life based on joy, I think, is, is how to do it, based on love and joy. And then as we go into Sagittarius at the end of the month, the story is going to start to change. You know, and the first story that changes is your story with yourself. I'm not the wimp anymore. I'm not the abandoned one anymore. I'm not the weak one anymore. I, that was my story. That's not my story anymore. There's the line. We draw a line between the two stories. And so we start to tell ourselves a new story uh, leading up through the holidays. And by the time we hit New Year's this year, it's going to be a whole new story. You know, it's going to be a whole new story that you're aiming for next year. Everyone's going to have a complete uh, new narrative that they want to live. And it might be what you've always wanted to live and you never allowed yourself to. Um, but it also might be like in your case, Ra, where it's like, um, okay, I've proven to myself I'm not going to fail a business. Now what? <laughs> you know, like, now right. what do we do? You know, have babies or, you know, do to another <laughs> state? Like, what should we do? Yeah. So are you saying, so it's the start of the, the new moon cycle, right? And then you're saying that we, we release that slide, the cycle we just came through and that there's like a different phase of us that we're going into every moon cycle is that what you're am i gathering like it's it's tied to the moon cycles or is it tied to something else it's tied to many 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 cycles all coming to sort of a a 12 o'clock sort of moment if you okay. want to think about it as a clock so it's like you have so we have a, a so the longest the the hour hand on the planets is pluto pluto is the slowest moving planet 249 mm -hmm. years right so pluto stays in one sign for 14 to 24 years that's how slow it is pluto is about to move to aquarius which is a big deal because it hasn't been in aquarius since 1777 um it it was basically pluto the end of capricorn was the american revolution where at the end of last time pluto's at this spot 
our forefathers said we want freedom from Britain, taxation without representation. The so, beginning of the revolution. The very beginning. Yes, the the fight for power. And we can see that fight for power now. We're seeing the fight in, in the Middle East. We're seeing a fight over currency. You know, we're seeing a fight for power in our own government. We're seeing a fight for power with the, you know, weaponization of our, you know, our agencies. We're seeing, you know, a fight for power as far as trying to keep a president from running, you know, also Xing out, you know, RFK from being able to run in the Democratic Party. He was Xed out. So we're seeing great abuses of power, just like we saw King George abusing power on the colonists back in 1776. It's the same thing, but this time it's really the people versus corporations. If you want to get down to it, it's Great Britain is not doing the taxation without representation. It's the World Bank now. As mm -hmm. And how it's evolved to. Yeah. And they've got a stranglehold on the whole entire world. The entire world. Yeah. And, you know, it goes back to a, a particular families and whatnot. So <clears throat> when Pluto moves into Aquarius, the, the drum for freedom becomes very loud. Pluto is sort of is an empowering planet. It, it forces you to face whatever it, it says. This is what we're going to face. Um, and, and so liberty, freedom, justice for all, those are all Aquarius words, basically. So all the power circle is going to move for, for a desire for freedom. Uh, and, and it dips in in January of next year until June. And then there's another power struggle. And then Pluto is in Aquarius uh, for 24 years, a year from now. So it starts in 24 years. So at that point, I think people are no longer going to tolerate. You know, people have the backbone to say no. And it, it, it will be no on both sides, you know, <laughs> like people who want things to stay the same will say, no, we're tired of you hippies trying to change the world, you know, so everyone digs their heels in at that point. So there's, that's a very long cycle that's about to end, right? Um, Pluto and Aquarius, I mean, Pluto and Capricorn has been in since 2008. So that's a long cycle. Saturn and Pisces, Pisces is spirituality. Saturn is getting responsible Saturn and Pisces now at today at zero Pisces direct. So it went to seven and went back to zero. Saturn and Pisces is it's time to take it's time to take responsibility for your spiritual issues or your karmic issues. And and that it means the end of a lot of most things in our life are driven by our pain and our and our karma. Almost everyone is motivated by not screwing up. They're not motivated by what they want. So people right. are in like in your case, it was with business. You have current at 26 Taurus. So you wanted to be successful and get back into the power of being in business. You've been probably almost obsessed with it your entire life, um, making sure you don't make that mistake again. <laughs> so what happens with Saturn and Pisces is people suddenly go come to the conclusion that they have nothing more to prove. So that is a huge liberating force to people who have been living according to their shadow, their fears, their, you know, their worries, you know, now suddenly we're cut free from our own bondage that we put ourselves in. Uh, and so that's a, that's a new cycle, <clears throat> but Neptune is an old, is a planet that uh, has a very long orbit. Um, and the last time Neptune was in Pisces was the American civil war. So as far as morality is concerned, We've also finished up a lap of uh, a discussion and awakening of morality. So the last time that we really looked at our morality was just prior to the American Civil War. And then as soon as Neptune went into Aries, we, we had a war over morality. That was a moral war. That was a, it's not right to have slavery. It was also economic too. There's a World Bank back then that was screwing with us too. But So then that's representative and reflected currently somehow. A hundred percent. So you, you mentioned uh, power, like uh, the, the, the acknowledgement of personal power and not being taken over. And then the morality thing was the last thing that you mentioned. And then in between, you were talking about um, not, being, not being so fixated on the motivations away from the things that we fear. And so all of these cycles are starting up i coming guess full, full circle they're coming full circle yeah i mean because it is just a circle the, the orbits yes so it's, it's like so you start to see the scenery repeating itself <laughs> you start to see like that you could go down the same path again that you could make the same mistake again that 
you know, and so, as, you know, you, you stay insane until you come to this realization where you, the patterns become really clear in your, in your life, several patterns. And at that point, people have the will to change. And the responsibility to. Yeah. That's our, our self-evolution relies on our awareness of these. Well, that, that's amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's all happening like these next few months. Yes. Is, this is a very important time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we should all be aware of potential forks in the road and to make sure that we're choosing authentically. Yes. Well, well said. 100%. And actually, there's no better time than chaos than to change the world. Right. So it's like, if everything's in chaos, you should definitely start your new business. <laughs> like, you know, like you should definitely, you know, put up a lemonade stand and sell lemonade to the soldiers in the Civil War. Like, I'm not saying take advantage, you know, in the sense of take advantage of others. But like, when things are this, this loosey goosey, which is where they are, really incredible things can come out of nowhere that you never thought would be possible. They have because they have to come from this place. Yeah. Yeah. And you could say that's what evolution is, you know, survival, right. survival, the fittest and, and whatnot that in that moment of chaos, it drives, you know, people to go into new directions. When you were talking about the wars, I was just thinking of the, the word explosive, like yeah. the, the cycles seem explosive right now. And yeah, when you think about business, you want explosive growth. Like that's 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 like the complete focus of of anything is explosive growth. So yeah, I think we're seeing that we're gonna see that in a. I think we're about so Uranus, another outer planet. So these outer planets move slower, and so they represent you know eras, you know, of different lengths. So. You know, um, a Uranus era is 84 years. That's the orbit. It takes 84 years for it to go around one time. So the last time Uranus was where it is right now was the start of World War II. Uranus is in Taurus. In fact, Uranus is heading for your Chiron, which means that, you know, your, your business, so your strive for business and manifestation, it has all so far been to survive. Like for you, it's been to survive and to, and to get yourself back in the power you once enjoyed. You've been personally obsessed is a good word when it comes to not in a bad way, but just like focused is another way to look at it on bringing yourself up to a certain level. But um, Uranus is the innovation planet It is like technology innovation and that sort of thing. So you're going to take your vision to a higher level here in the next couple of years. You, you, you've been only aiming so high. Um, because you were trying to get yourself back to where you were. As you start to see yourself in that same level of power, you realize, oh, I can do better. I can go higher. Why was I limiting myself? Well, because you were focused on that, those, that cord, you know, the karmic cord. But Uranus in Taurus is innovation of technology, <clears throat> fast innovation of technology. So the last time Uranus was right here was the start of World War II, which is the invention of the atom bomb, the jet engine, television, rockets, you know, all sorts of technology, radar. I mean, basically every war technology that we have used in the last 84 years was invented right where this Uranus place is. So we're also on the brink of some insane technology advancements, which you can see coming to a head, like with AI, you can see it, you know, um, AI is like, is one of the technological revolutions. It's going to just skyrocket everything. The internet was a major you know, but now the internet of things where all of our devices are talking to all of our devices and our car is saying hello and our phone is saying good night, you know, like, you know, we're about to move into that Jetson age. So it's not just that society is about to advance, but technology is too, which is also a, you know, an explosive growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the shift between pre-internet and post-internet was dramatic, right? And over the last 20 years and this shift between whatever's next, which it's very well likely AI, that is going to be more condensed, more potent, and a greater growth of technology. So if we, you think back to 1996, like before internet in your pocket, compared to 2020, like the internet's completely changed in, in 25 years, but 10, 15 
years of AI, like what is going to be different? Like, I don't even think we can really imagine that. Mm. Uh, that's how different it's going to be. Um, and, and it's going to happen quicker. So yeah, and it's starting to I guess now. Yeah, I guess those who can imagine it and visualize it and, and set it into motion are going to be the creators of the new world. And that opportunity, fortunately, is available for all of us. It, it doesn't require big budget. It doesn't require big armies of people this time. It's, it's available for anybody that's paying attention. Yeah. And have, who has access to those tools. But yes. They're making the tools accessible to everyone right now because they want everyone to, to train the tools. So right. the only reason why we have ChatGPT for free is because ChatGPT is actually studying us when we're using it. Yeah, we're the, uh, we're the source. <laughs> we are, are the source. And it's already devoured the internet, so it needs more input. So the, the next level of input is human beings using it and, and it learning from us using it, basically. Yeah. And then eventually it's going to be hooking into all of our like histories of devices and you know getting access to every message we've ever sent to anybody and and that'll just all be inputted more data for it but first we have to first we're we're being sort of like uh dripped dripped exposure to it so that we accept yes you can go through every message i've ever written to anybody and and use that as training um yeah because then we can duplicate ourselves. i think people will sign on to things like that if the ai can duplicate us but then it needs access to our history our like everything we've ever written in our life every email we've ever written it would need access to that so it knows the decisions that we would make in certain situations um i think that people are scared of that now but i think eventually it's just going to be part of part of our life i mean just like people were scared of cars and airplanes and the internet when it first came people are definitely scared of ai and i think there is right to be cautious but it's happening no matter what it's happening like it's it's coming Full it's first. it's moving fast yeah i i well but again so i feel flipping back to the human component of this um this is why the human race needs to spiritually evolve past technology like so you know technology gets us to a certain place and then we sort of get lazy in the technology and then at some point we've got to go greater than the technology uh, and i think that's what human garage is about i think it's what i'm about it's like the human condition is ready to go to the next conscious level and i think that's how we win over ai be because um because we have superpowers in our availability like i'm full-on psychic i can read people i'm always right this this is real there isn't there is an afterlife as far as i'm concerned there's another there's other dimensions and and so if we as humans pioneer into those new realms that's where ai will not be able to touch us you know? so can i ask you a question because yeah. you mentioned step of consciousness so in the direction that we're going what do you perceive is the next step you mentioned psychic so like mm. as a collection of species, what's the next stage of human consciousness? Which direction are we going? What does it look like? I think what it looks like is that you see, you know, so I think we start to see an augmented reality to borrow a technology term. So there, there are colors your eye currently can't see. There's like infrared, for instance, right? right. Like, so it's like our, we're sort of programmed to a certain spectrum of color, we're programmed to a spectrum of sound. Dogs can hear things that we can't hear. So the humans, the human consciousness spectrum itself is about to widen, Got which it. means which means we're going to have more input. I would say we probably see new colors. I mean, real like we literally see color. We're already inventing new colors with computers that we haven't found in nature already. So we're already creating new colors. But becoming aware of our spiritual connection, becoming aware of our the fact that we are all one consciously and that's something the that technology is sort of helping us. So it's like, I think about a friend, they text message me a minute later. So we're starting to see. So now it's like, okay, what was the feeling you had just a half second before the text message and realizing, Oh, I did have a feeling 
that came, like a certain buzz, my heart did light up when I thought of them. And then they text messaged me. And, and you're realizing, oh, the me lighting up and my heart lighting up, that was the, that was me text messaging them spiritually. Mm-hmm. And then they used the dinosaur text message to, to, say, to say hi back. So I think we, be, we start to become aware of our hyper aware of our other, other realities and their dimensions, which means that I think we start to see in past life. So I've had many past life visions in my life and they're confirmed. I mean, I don't go out to confirm them, but I'll get a reading with the psychic and I'm like, Oh, you have a past life over here. And I'm like, wow, it's exactly what I saw what three other psychics have told me, you know, like, so you start to piece together the fact that we live many lives and start to become aware of the fact we live many lives. I mean, I think the biggest breakthrough in human consciousness would be proof of heaven. So if we if we can prove that we continue on to another life and come back, if we can somehow prove that undeniably, everything changes forever. You know, it's, greed changes forever because you're going to get another shot at this. Maybe I don't want to have to, you know, rape, pillage, and burn to become rich. Or I was rich and I lost it. And you know what? I wasn't happy with you in that life. So having that awareness of like, oh, that was a path that didn't turn out for me sort of like changes all of our motives you know, if we know that we're going to live on, if we know we've lived in the past, if we have memories of the times we've lived in the past, well, that suddenly the what becomes important in our life completely changes, especially when you know I can always do it the next life if I want to, or I've already done that before in a past life. Or if I run into you and you look familiar and I remember you, you know, fighting a war with you in the Civil War. Like, so I think where we open up next is this multidimensional awareness. We realize we are multidimensional. We realize we are... Um, we live forever, that our conscience cannot be destroyed, that our uniqueness of who we are cannot be destroyed. Um, and, you know, so what they say as far as the ascended master path. So I don't know if you're familiar with the ascended masters. Have you just studied that at all or heard about it? Not that particular <laughs> term. Well, it's, a, it's you know, it's an I mean, term. ascended masters in general, I understand that. But if there's like a group called that, then no. Oh, no. I mean, it's a general term. Like, the yeah. idea is that the idea of like what Christ did, what Yogananda did, like you reach a certain awareness of your uh, where you don't have to return to the earth where you can break the karma cords of having to come back. So the idea is that as long as we have attachments to this reality and hang ups, we come down here, we learn, we grow. And at some point we we beat the matrix. At some point we can decide to leave this life at will and go to the other dimensions and then come back at will. And this is where we have allegedly ascended the human experience. And they, they, you know, they say it's 5D, the fifth dimension. I lost you for a second again. All right, now you're back. So uh, yeah, ascended to 5D is where we were at. Yeah, so. The idea of five, this idea of 5D is popular in the spiritual community, and, it, yeah. and it's the idea of where we are living in our light body. And so apparently we have a light body, which is also known as our soul, that, that, that gets incarnated into our physical material body. So allegedly the human race will, as they become aware, graduate this need for absolute flesh and only live in the light body. And yeah. that, and that we... Yeah, exactly. And so ascended masters like St. Germain, apparently Jesus ascended. I mean, that's, you know, and they say he died and rose again. You know, what other light workers say is he ascended. Like he came to right. a point where he realized he could just leave at will, <clears throat> which is you, t- you literally, your body turns into light and is le- there is no body left behind allegedly. And this has allegedly been witnessed by people who became ascended masters. So where's the human race going? I think into that, into that enlightenment. That's the direction. In our lifetime, I think we start to see people, I think the door opens and we start to see, hey, it's a possibility for the first time. And I'm sure there's people ready to ascend now. I don't know. I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, that's the reason for us being in physical bodies constrained by linear time is for us to learn the lessons, like you're saying. And then as individuals, we start to be able to pierce through the veil of individuality and start to sense other people. Yeah. And yes. as we, that, like, for me, that's the game changer is when, when we can feel other people's emotions as if they're our own and we can think their thoughts. And, and right now that's not happening on a grand collective scale, but some people, like you said, psychic abilities, 
empaths, we're starting to see some of those happenings, those powers start to percolate into our conscious awareness. And it's going, like you said, as our spirituality shifts up, then the decisions that we make and how we use technology is all going to shift. And that's all necessary for our ascension with or without technology. I feel technology is just the alternative. Uh, it's kind of like the, the training wheel version of this stuff because what is instagram like even right now other people can hear the words coming out of our our mouths instantaneously so they're even gaining perspective our perspective as we're talking about it and that's giving them our perspective and it's just a matter of time before we don't have to talk like this anymore and people will just know what we know by being around us being in our field being in our frequency and once we have those ability, once we ascend to those abilities, then as a human race, we start to become cohesive. Like we start to cooperate as opposed to trying to strengthen our individuality. Individuality, we start to seek to merge with others. And then once that happens, then there's going to become less and less of a desire to have individual bodies. And we can release and shed the need for the individual nature of ourself and we become an, like basically a disembodied species mm -hmm. and we basically become a collection of entities that is is like an ultimate consciousness and that's where some of these uh entities like ra not me but like the entity that we know of as the sun god ra from from ancient egypt uh that's what ra was ra was a collection of disembodied entities that ascended out of venus it was the human species from venus that ascended um through ascension and now they're in uh sixth density i believe and in order to to influence earthlings they they labeled themselves as ra and basically came down to egypt and tried giving us advice but we pretty much took it and used it for power and corruption mm -hmm. but, yeah i think it's a lesson for i've heard i was going to actually speak to venus and you just brought it up so we're telepathic here allegedly there's a dead species that's invisible on venus right now like they're still there there's no need for homes it doesn't matter that it's 100 you know kelvin like they're they're in the they're all their energy is all there in venus which is this twin planet to earth you know almost in size <clears throat> um energetically and i've always heard that the sun raw is is alive like it's a consciousness it is a being like every star is a being every planet is a being they're different types of beings so I think mean, there's credibility to the star. I still call the call our star Ra, you know, myself, because it's allegedly twin flames with the star Sirius, that they're twin flames apparently, and ho holding down these two sister, two sister systems, the Sirius system and, and our Ra system. So yeah, I agree. And we do ascend. I think though what's interesting is like, for young ascended masters, their lesson was you can't force an ant to evolve on command. <laughs> Like, yeah. for, them, for them, it was a lesson of like, oh, we can't just snap our fingers and make a species evolve. They took our gifts and they killed each other with it, you know, like, and so that was their lesson in, in being teachers, you know, for that moment. Yeah. And it's something that we even go through here. Like, we can't just force our elevated consciousness onto others and say, you should be this way because it's, the, the, if you lift somebody up to a point where they can't stabilize, they're going to fall deeper than they would have if you wouldn't have done that. And that's, that's where the danger is, is the mistakes are graver if you're at a level that you, that you can't sustain. Yeah. Which is, you know, part of the reason why wealth can be very damaging, why celebrities will collapse at some point because they accelerate so far and so high up without a strong foundation of growth that built them there. So any overnight success is going to have, is going to collapse at some point because they don't have the foundation to sustain the height that they're at, whatever that happens to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, getting back to the cycles, is there any, just, I didn't want to um, no, move on. 
Yes, yeah, the, the cycles were amazing. Is there any other planets that are that are coming to to twelve o'clock right now? Well, as you said, um, so well, Uranus is is has just reached it where it's at a turning point. So the technology is like we're over the hill with Uranus. Um, Neptune is about ready with the so Neptune reaches the same place. So as far as moral lessons, the final apex of the moral lesson is next April. So Neptune will be the same place it was when the American Civil War started. So we're building up to a big change, as I said. Um, Pluto is about is American Revolution. So we told that Jupiter, which is a every 12 year transit. Jupiter is um, uh, is in Taurus right now, which means that everyone is growing. Everyone is growing and developing right now this whole year. The last time Jupiter was in Taurus is 2011 to 2012. So it's a once every 12 year. And then Jupiter goes into Gemini a year from now. And at that point, information starts to speed up life starts to speed up so we're basically a pregnant cow right now we're all about to have a calf which is jupiter and taurus we're all about to birth something new which is every 12 years this happens so 2011 2012 was the last time and prior to that was 99 2000 you can see 99 2000 because that was really the big the 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 dot-com boom and burst was 29 and also you know y2k and you know i think the internet sort of uh took off in at 99 2000 that was so that was the first time. And then uh, when Jupiter went from 2011 to 2012, I think we saw a lot of the app, the smartphone, you know, we saw, you know, we went on to, it became from a desktop to a phone really is when the masses all had a smartphone, a phone that could search the internet. And here we are again, we're about to see technology burst of AI. So, um, so we are at a huge explosive moment for technology manifestation, also economy dealing with money, um, so we might see something happen in the economy significant. I mean, inflation is already happening, obviously, but you might see the introduction to a new currency, for instance. I've seen a lot of rumors about, are we going to go on the gold standard? Are we going to have a digital coin? The answer is yes and yes. Like, I think something uh, World Bank level is about to happen with finances and the economy. So sort of brace yourself for that. Yeah, they're make making moves of some some sort. It's it's too much for me to pay attention to, but I know I know the people that do pay attention to that are like they're 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 saying something like th those people are are working hard on something some shift they're they're getting like they're I don't know it's too much for me it's, uh, yeah to think about but I would say it's time for people to you know have a have a back, you know, have a backup plan, like to, this is definitely a time where you want to like have some backup plan. <laughs> Cause you know, I'm not saying backup plan is, I mean, some people are going off grid completely and growing their own food. That's pretty autonomous, but I also think some are you, another business you might go into or another place you might do business. You know, there, there could be a lot of migration um, happening because of financial and financially motivated. Yeah. You know, yeah. and odds are it's going to affect if you've got all your eggs in one basket, it's going to affect that. So diversifying somehow allows you to, to weather the storm if it happens. Yes. yes, diversify. Absolutely. And and have have a backup, something with your something your heart's in, invested. In. I find that if your heart is really into something, it will succeed. You yeah, know, it's, it's always. always yeah. Go ahead. It's always a good plan to invest in the world that you'd like to see like the companies that support the world that you like to see the activities that you that you would like to be within your life um the people around you invest in relationships that make you feel the best so that and you are your you got your your hand on the pulse of the change that you'd like to see and you're learning and you're evolving in that direction you're also pushing the earth towards that direction because we are we are cumulative energy and so if you are following your joy raw you are saving the planet you know you're not you're not working for the man you're not worried about your retirement per se and not worried about your ira going up and down the stock market because you're following your heart and so you all of your spiritual attention is being put into love and joy and so this this makes it very difficult for people who want to ruin the party <laughs> you know so we, we, we say we're powerless, but we're not. We have all the power. And the more we bring joy on the planet, the more we screw the plans of those who are not thinking in those terms. 
Right. And it's necessary for a lot of us. I mean, it's just us, right? All we really have to worry about is ourselves. Yes. Because that's the only thing that we can control. And yeah. that was weird. You just did the, the double thumbs up is the new Apple uh, signature to create fireworks. Oh, I know. That's an, that's an <laughs> Apple thing. You, yeah, you could also do the heart thing. I think it has hearts come out there. I could do a heart shape. I don't know if I can. Yep, I oh, can. There, there we go. go. Amazing. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it'll make hearts come out this is new apple tricks yeah and there's also the one thumbs up too which i think does a little like you yeah the little i've been seeing up. that this whole time and i was like wondering how that's happening <laughs> you were just rolling with it you're a pro <laughs> you're like, like someone's you're, giving super thumbs up yeah well tiktok has also stuff like that where they like you find yourself with a crown on your head or something crazy but yeah um so this week to like bring it all like bring it down to something grounded because you and i have gone to gone to venus and back which i appreciate by the way brother um it's great talk I, this is the week where we have to define our emotional comfort zones so it's really about defining what you would be emotionally comfortable with in the future would you be emotionally comfortable with you know so and so in the white house would you be emotionally comfortable with relocating would you be emotionally comfortable with you know living outside the city and and that emotional comfort zone is are the final degrees of scorpio so today we're at 20 degrees scorpio to 29 from 2029 20, to scorpio we're going to sort of feel what our comfort zones are and that that becomes an emotional cradle that sort of keeps you on track going into the next year. So because where we're headed is something we've never lived before, the earth's never lived it before, minds have not conceived it before, AI only digests the past. AI is not creative. It can't yeah, create yeah. something brand new. It only can create what it's already seen before. So that's another advantage of where humans are better than AI. Um, AI, does if it hasn't seen it, it doesn't know it kind of thing. It's based on just observing. But these, this emotional cradle that you set up in this next uh, next nine days is sort of the comfort zone where you will make choices into next year. So when something random happens in your life, it has to be chosen by, well, is that in my comfort zone? Does that feel comfortable to me? Do I feel safe in that in that space? Or what would it take to shield me? You know, so maybe, you know, you, for instance, you and your wife might decide to move somewhere, but give yourself permission to move back if it doesn't work. You know, telling yourself, hey, I, I'm going to try it, but I'm also going to give myself permission to move back if it doesn't work. That's a boundary. That's a comfort zone. It gives you freedom to move about the cabin because you have a, you've drawn a line as to where you feel comfortable and where you don't. And so all it's kind of esoteric. That's basically what we're doing between now and Thanksgiving as we're crafting our comfort zones. And I think this is the final straw. I think Israel, Iran, you know, uh, the, China, Russia, they're also manifesting their comfort zones. So, you know, it looks like at the end of the month, if there's gonna be a world war, we'll probably know at the end of the month. <laughs> if there is. And we're all <laughs> <laughs> I say that so casually. <laughs> like, we're all gonna, gonna get to know how we feel about it as well. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think you're deciding if, if now here's what I believe. If everyone watching this goes, I'm not comfortable with the world war. Right. I'm not comfortable with my, that, that feeling can be felt by people in Washington. That feeling can be felt by the leaders. At some point, the, the leaders do feel the collective and then they either have the, the gonads or not to go against what they feel. But we all know, I mean, look at, Cher, for instance, the star Cher. I mean, she's got some strong boundaries. You know probably not to walk up to her in a restaurant because she's got something energetically saying, back off, right? Like, give me my space. So, you know, people deciding at home if they're comfortable with the World War or not could be what determines whether or not there is one because it's setting a certain vibe that world leaders are not going to get away with a third go at a world war. Oops. So I think I went oh there you are i went numb there for a minute yeah yeah there i mean back to what we were saying before i think that that's the only thing that we can do is right is to establish our comfort zone and and then we're sort of all responsible if there's a war or not based yeah. on that yes 
I think so. I think to be complicit is not cool at this point. Not that you have to go out and, you know, I mean, do what your heart tells you to do. If your heart tells you to write a congressman, then write your congressman. Like, do what your heart tells you. But being very clear as a collective conscious member who came here, I mean, I believe the souls that are in this lifetime right now knew full well in heaven, you know, that the earth would come to this deciding point as to is it going to be utopia or is it going to be dystopia? Which way is it going to go? You know, are we going to destroy this earth? Or are we going to elevate to a higher level? That's a choice. It's a free will choice. At some point, they lost Venus, you know, like, like something went wrong on Mars. It looks like there is tech, you know, so it hap it does happen. Species do expire if they allow it to happen. Perhaps we were part of those galactic communities. But uh, I think if you are here, you came to have a vote and a front row seat to that historic moment for earth, which Technically, I mean, honestly, I'm not trying to be dramatic, starts today. Like, as far as the plans are concerned, today is the first day of the new world. It really, truly is. Like, nothing started yet, but, like, we've officially ended. This new moon that was this morning at 4.32 a.m. Um, Eastern time, that, that was the end of the old world and the beginning of the new world, as far as the plans are concerned. Well, I'm glad that we're all hearing this message then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I think you would have gotten the message next year anyway, so you're not in Kansas anymore. So you're yeah. hearing it ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, which also means it's a green light for people. So I, everyone I talk to has a dream that they wanted to live on this in this lifetime. And so the universe is saying it's time to go yeah. for your dreams 100%, no matter how kooky it is, go for it. Right. Push down the gas pedal. Yeah. Follow your heart. Make it happen. Even if you can't succeed, even trying influences people around you. Yeah. I mean, that's the only way that we that we discover if it's going to happen or not is to actually do it. The answer yes. that might be holding, that's the fear that may be holding us back is not knowing if it's going to work out or not. But we only really get to see if it works out or not or something else happens is if we do it so 100%. the answer is to do it yes and as a person who is a doer you have to you don't know until you're about you know a few minutes in if it's going to work no one does you know like just so no one knows so elon musk and rocket ships and electric cars and thomas edison the light bulb like you you have no none of us have any clue as we're starting off that it's going to work we just have a feeling it will <laughs> you know and so you just go with that feeling, yeah. You uh, definitely opened my eyes to a whole bunch today. Do you, do we have anything else pertinent to to share with people before we hop off here? Um, I think we're. I think just to realize that you are setting your emotion. You are setting long term comfort zones right now and the world is listening so i would say to be outspoken at least in your life about what shall not happen and what shall happen to make that sort of spiritual vote and including with politics including with world leaders to say to, to say consciously and if you say it out loud you make it real so whether you're in the car alone or you're at home to speak out loud these are these are my commandments as one of the creators co-creators of the planet I command this, I command that, and it is a command. Ascended Masters will tell you, when you are working with God on that level, you are commanding it to happen. You're not asking. You have the right. <laughs> Another important to. shift, yes, that's amazing. It's not, it's not so much going with the flow, it's you are the flow. Yes. So yes. direct it accordingly. Make it's your decision. It's a level of awareness, yes. You reach a level of spiritual awareness where you command. So I always say Jesus commanded the water to turn into wine. You know, it was a commandment from the heart. That's the other aspect. It's the heart commanding, not the mind. Mm -hmm. The mind commands and nothing will happen. The heart has to be the one that commands, which means it always comes from a place of love. And it's always good for you and good for others. Those commandments. It's in everyone's highest good. And that's when I think God gives you the key to magic. When you are acting like a, a miniature God and you are doing right for you and right for all the children, then you get to have the keys to the kingdom. That's sort of the unwritten law of metaphysics. Thank you for all this. So if somebody wants to find out more about you and your work, where, where can they do that? 
So, so there's a special for human garage. We have a special deal with human garage. You all have uh, in, in your website, in your app, there are affiliates basically that are, that are working business alliances. I think is what it's called. Go in through that portal and sign up serious joy, uh, which is my service. We do day to day moment to moment uh, uh, life coaching based on your astrology. And right now we're doing the 40 days of my truth and purpose, which is like, we're showing people walking them through their chart so they can find out what their truth is in this lifetime and what their purpose is in this lifetime. And you, even though we've started, you can catch up. Like it's, it's very infectious because you're learning about yourself. So you really can't put it down. Like it, you, you love learning more about yourself. So don't worry if you're behind or whatever, this isn't homework. This is the most fun homework you've ever done. And it's affirming about who you are. So going through Gary's app and um, through the website and join us. Cause we have a bunch of human garage people on right mm -hmm. now. And, um, and, and you're really going to really set yourself up for the new age when you can look at your astrology and know, yes, this is my truth. This is my purpose. Let's do it. So uh, that's what I recommend. Yes. And I invite everybody to do that. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for everybody joining us on Astro Mondays with Christopher Wuteki. Thank you. It was nice to meet you, Ra. And if you ever want to get a reading, uh, hit I, me up. <laughs> I will holler at you for sure. Please Take do. care. All right. All right. Best to everyone. Ciao for now.